Boy, do we have a great show for you today. My industry expert believes that if you hold yourself and your team accountable, maintain strong focus on fundamentals, learn from failure, and commit to growing the business, you will be successful. Let's get fired up about mastering the fundamentals on today's episode of the Fitness Business Podcast. Thank you so much for all of your comments on my recent guest, but can I ask you for a favor? Can you take your comments to social media so that other FBP listeners can share in your feedback? All right, now don't forget tag the fitness business podcast as well as the guest. Thank you. Welcome fitness business podcast family to today's episode. My name is Dory Nugent. In today's episode, multi-fitness club owner Landon Burningham is here to discuss the importance of mastering the fundamentals of business with consistency and using these fundamentals to build a deep-rooted foundation that can weather any storm. Landon's episode will start in two minutes, so stay put, pull up a chair, and don't go anywhere. The Fitness Business Podcast is one of the world's longest-running podcasts for the fitness business owner manager or entrepreneur. We have 66% of downloads in the US, 24% in Australia, 10% in the UK, and the remainder dotted across the English-speaking world. We know the content we deliver every week is educational and specific to the decision makers in business. We want to thank Apana, MyZone, BodyMap, MXM, Rex Roundtables, and Warrior Instructor Academy for supporting the podcast. The reality, though, is we need three more partners to join our FBP family. We have three places for brands who want to promote themselves and align themselves with a global podcast. Podcast advertising is evergreen marketing for you, and it is a great opportunity for you to truly tell you can tell your story. If you want to know more, go to the show notes at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com or simply click on contact on the homepage of fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. We look forward to having you join the FBP family as a partner or an advertiser. Get your pen ready now for my zones, Fitbizpiration. Landon, what are your top three takeaways from today's episode? Yeah, thanks, Dory. I think the top three takeaways for me are first, focus on the fundamentals. Regardless of the department, regardless of the position, the fundamentals are key to the success of your business. Second is allow failure, learn from failure, allow disappointment. It's part of the process and it will help you develop those fundamentals to become a really, really strong foundation. And then the last and third would be probably one of the most important would be have a good team, a good support system, and some people, whether it's within your organization or outside your organization, to help you develop and keep to those fundamentals. Next week's guest is a legend in his industry, but I thought his topic would be 100% relatable to our industry. The world-renowned Will Gadara is coming onto the podcast to talk about the hospitality business. Will is the former owner of Eleven Park Madison, and he is the author of the best-selling book, Unreasonable Hospitality. I am excited to have Will join me on the podcast, as I believe your business will benefit immensely from what he has to share. After today's interview, Will will be featured on the Quick Fire 5 segment. This podcast is brought to you by Hapana. Hapana is a cutting edge membership management solution prioritizing insane engagement. Hapana puts your brand first so you can facilitate deep, meaningful connections with clients and members to book, pay, consume content, and build community. Hapana partners with fitness brands in both the boutique and big box segments that want to drive efficient operations and maximum engagement with clients and members. And they do this by providing direct world-class support with a passionate team who cares about your success. 
To see how you can transform your brand, go to Hapana.com and ask for a demonstration. Hapana, engineered for engagement. Let's transition into this week's interview with Landon. Visionary leader and multi-fitness club owner, Landon Birmingham, is joining us today on the Fitness Business Podcast. Landon, thank you for coming on. Lori, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Me too. Today, you know what, Landon, you're our industry expert and you're going to talk to our FVP family out there about steps, just kind of building those steps to a successful business. And a lot of that just through fundamentals. Right. Yeah. I think that as, as business owners, we often get just too caught up in in everything that there is to do every day in owning a business, particularly a fitness business that has so many different segments to it. When really the success comes down to just focusing particularly on on certain fundamentals that may vary position by position, but fundamentals as a whole. I like how you say though, like brick by brick, because I feel like that doesn't make it sound so overwhelming that even the newest business owner out there is like, okay, I could handle one brick at a time. Right. Right. I think that oftentimes, and and I actually got this from the Will Smith memoir. It's a great book, uh, but he talks about in that, that him and his brother had to fill this, this giant gap in a wall and that they had to do so by laying a brick. And his dad didn't let them just buy any any bricks. He had to make their own bricks. And then they had to lay the bricks. And he talked about that it felt like this insurmountable wall that they would never finish, right? This, this one they could never go over. And his dad talked to him and said, you got to stop focusing on the wall and instead focus on the brick. And he mentions that as he focused less on this wall that seemed to be never ending and something he could never finish and focus instead on the brick, that the time went by faster, it became more enjoyable, and it became something that at the end of it, he all of a sudden said, we, we've we completed this wall. And I think as a business, we focus way too much on the goal that we're hoping to achieve rather than the individual bricks that we need to to achieve that goal. All right. Well, great topic today. I feel like you're going to nail it. So I know you really put a lot of stress on fundamentals and the importance of fundamentals in the fitness business. So I'd love for you to talk about like, you know, what should the business owner that's out there listening today, keep an eye on? Yeah. And, and, you know, I talk about this a lot with my staff and with other business owners. And I think that it's like talking about what fundamentals should a football team focus on. It's going to be very different depending on the position, whether you're offense or defense, you know, are you a wide receiver or are you a quarterback? Your fundamentals are going to be very different, just like they're going to be different for a football team that's in high school versus a football team that's maybe college or professional. And I think that oftentimes it's important for our business to realize like what stage are we in? And then what are we trying to do to focus on those fundamentals? So in my particular business, you know, multi-location, we have five locations here in the Willamette Valley. We try and break down the fundamentals by position. So our front desk, what are the fundamentals for those? An example may be, you know, greeting customers within four seconds of coming in, having good eye contact, making sure we're greeting them by name, we're introducing ourselves, those type of, type of things. And they'll change, like I said, by position. The managers may be, you know, hiring the right staff engaging with your staff, making sure your staff is feeling as if they're really, truly part of the team. Um, So I think it's first identifying the position that you want to build the fundamentals around and then really breaking it down by what goal you're trying to accomplish and what's going to help you accomplish that goal. Before we started recording today, we, we, we kind of were just prepping here. We were talking a little bit about fundamentals. I love the fact that you said to me, like, you already told me like, hey, fundamentals change. And I think you said this week already, you had some fundamentals change. Can you expand a little bit by what on what you meant by that? Yeah, I think that, you know, you look at even something like the fundamentals of um, a manager could be building the proper schedule for their team to ensure both the club itself is operating at the at the right capacity with the right kind of staff. But also with that is making sure the schedule fits the the team's needs. And we've kind of had, you know, schedule templates or, or budgeted hours like like any one of the business has. But we came in, we said, I had one of my, emplo- my employees come, one of our managers, she's great. And she said, look, looking out for the best interest of our assistant fitness managers, I think we need to go from, you know, a five day a week schedule to, you know, four tens. It's going to give them more work-life balance. And so that fundamental, while it's still a fundamental in the sense of we got to focus on the schedule, it has changed by how can we create a better work-life balance for our, our team. And as such, they're going to create a better experience for our members. So a fundamental can change in that aspect, or it may change in the fact that, you know, maybe a fundamental of marketing is I'm going to use Facebook. Well, 
Facebook may not be relevant for certain demographics. So now the fundamental may be, I got to switch that to TikTok. And how do I, how do I do that? Well, I love the fact that you're even considering the four 10 hour days and the work-life balance. I feel like the newer generation coming through the workforce, that is really important to them. So like- You had to push me a little bit to let me, uh, to have me be okay with it, but you know, majority rules and they persuaded me. So we're going to try it out and see how it goes. You know, I said before, plenty of our FVP family will resonate with your topic today. So can you take us back to when you discovered- you know, how important fundamentals were and actually, you know, how important they still are. And, you know, how did you make them a part of the physique culture? So the fundamentals, it's funny because it it's something that started resonating with me, not in business at all, but really in coaching. And so I started coaching my eight-year-old uh, son's flag football team. And he was, you know, five or six at the time. And we realized how important it was to just focus on something as simple as you need to learn how to pull a flag if you want to be successful in defense. It doesn't matter you know, what defensive formation we do. It doesn't matter anything else. If we can't pull a flag, we can't win. And we would focus, I, I'm, I'm serious, about three weeks of doing nothing but learning how to pull flags, pulling flag with the right hand, pulling with the left hand, pulling from an angle. And the kids, they got kind of bored about, you know, man, are we ever going to do anything other than pull flags? But success in flag football comes to, it doesn't matter how many points I can put up if I can't ever stop the other team, right? So we got to pull flags. And I realized at that moment that that fundamental there carried on to our business. And while we were doing these fundamentals naturally, it was something where we're like, hey, I know we need to greet someone within four seconds. I know we need to do this, that, and the other. But until we understood, hey, this is truly the fundamental that helps us build the foundation to what we expect out of our team and what we expect out of the success of our locations – it wasn't until then that we really started training on that. And then the training became, you know, the role playing and really helped us decide what we were going to do for all of our, you know, our learning management systems, our education systems, and all that that goes into how we train our team. Well, I believe fully that there are just certain fundamentals that need to have like muscle memory. Like right. you said, pulling the flag. It's just got to get to a point where you don't need to think about it anymore because there's going to be 10 other things that you're right. also going to have to juggle and handle. So hundred percent, you're hundred percent. And that muscle memory comes from that consistent practice, that consistent role playing. And it's important to identify it so that you can do that. Right. So listen, well, we just said, there's a lot of things to juggle. There's a lot of balls to watch. How do you recommend an owner keeping an eye on the important fundamentals? So I think I made this mistake early on in my career, and it took me years to realize it. But I think the biggest and best way to juggle that and keep your eye your eye on the ball and your eye on the prize is to delegate and have other people helping you. Oftentimes, as business owners, we want to do everything ourselves. Uh, personally, like my business is my baby. It's it's part of my family. It's blood, sweat, and tears. And my family has has always been part of it. My wife and my kids, they, you know, they grow up coming here and, and to our gyms. And so it's hard to delegate that responsibility to other people. But I think that through focus of the fundamentals, we can build trust in other people. And it's through that trust and the fundamentals that you do working with them that allows you to let go of certain areas. And doing so, whether it be hiring an operations manager or hiring an assistant or whatever it may be, allows you to have a second pair of eyes, right? So we always hear, man, I wish I had eyes in the back of my head or whatever it is, or wish I had more arms. Well, let, let's go ahead and just allow someone on our team to, to help us there. I'm going to ask this question from an owner's point of view. You you said you have five locations. Yes. You're one person. There's right. no doubt that keeping all these fundamentals in line as you expand and expand and expand. And I know that you like to put a heavy focus on growth. Do you find that there's certain fundamentals that slip through the cracks as you continue to grow or... Are you still just nailing down every single fundamental with each business that you open? Yeah, so take a little bit out of the Shake Shack play. You know, they talk about the bigger they get, the smaller they have to act. And I think that that's, that's part of it. I think that as a small business, when I was one location, you almost have to, and kind of for lack of a better phrase, like fake it till you make it, you have to act bigger than you are to drive people into your business and help and help them realize that you're not going away tomorrow. But as you grow in a business, oftentimes you focus more on the things that are going to continue to help you grow from a higher level. You know, maybe it's like, I got to get our financing under control. I got to find a, a real estate agent, to help us get the next location, that type of stuff. And we forget about the little things like 
consistently training our staff to ask about the fitness consult. How are we, te- are we teaching our team how to answer the phone? Are they answering it with a smile? Because you can hear a smile through the phone or are they just answering the phone, right? And so it's really acting small as you're starting to grow. So we're, you know, we're building our physique brand and we're building, you know, my wife and I have been uh, invested in the Covery franchise and we have a couple other businesses that we run and the fundamentals ring true in whatever it is. The bigger you get, the smaller you have to act and you have to focus on that like individual within the location. Listen, we used to make our front desk. We were like, we better see you smile, even if it's the fakest smile in the world. All all the time. Better be smiling if that phone is up to your ear, because I agree with you. You can hear a smile. when hear a smile. Yeah. And most customers like on that point, one of our one of our main fundamentals we do with our front desk is, you know, smiling when you answer the phone, but it's engaging with every customer that comes through our team and and not just ours as as in the physique team, but just in general. I think we stress a lot about, hey, this person's got to wait in line or, you know, maybe I'll just hurry and wave. But the reality of it is, is people are OK waiting in line. Think about a Starbucks line. People wait in that line all the time. But it's OK when we make them feel a certain way. So can we make them feel can we acknowledge them, make them feel heard, make them feel seen? And can we do so where it makes us feel like we makes them feel like we want to be there as well? Doing so with a smile, doing so with a proper greeting. Those are the things that are super important. I used to ask my sales team all the time. I'm like, did you ever rush into a business, ever rush into a store? Like you said, a Starbucks, you know, the gym, whatever. You ever just your your world outside of that store's door is just absolute chaos. You walk through and you step up and the person says, you know, either, hey, Dory, or just, hi, how can I help you? And you just feel like, everything's going to be all right. It's like, ah, like, especially Starbucks. It's like chaos outside in my world. But when I walk through the Starbucks door and the girl's like, hey, how can I help you? There's just something very calm and relaxing about that. It's, it's all about how you how you leave when you... So one of the fundamentals we teach here is like, we, we want to give the Disney experience. We want our people to to come and feel great and leave and feel even better. And in the fitness industry, working out is hard. And not everybody loves to loves to do it. In fact, you get sweaty, you get hot, you get dirty, and you get sore. So leaving is not that awesome. It's kind of like going to Costco, right? You walk in, you see a $1,500 TV that most people can't afford. You go through and see all these great deals until you check out, and you realize you just spent 600 bucks on crap. But then you stop and you get a $1.99 piece of pizza or a $1.50 hot dog with a drink, and you're like, man, I got such a great deal. That was amazing. And you go back and you do it again and again. Or at Disneyland, when you have a great greeting at the turnstile, and then you wait in these long lines all day with your four screaming kids, you spend way too much on food, but then you have the most wonderful firework display right as the kids are falling asleep in the stroller, and it's a great end to the day. And so you go back and do it again. So it's all about how do we make these people feel when they're in our facilities? Uh, absolutely. Lasting impression, marketing genius. Costco, marketing genius, having the uh, cheap food on the way out. On the way out. <laughs> way out. That's the last thing you remember, right? All right. Let's talk about when those fundamentals start going astray. This happens to every GM, every owner, department head. How do you correct that? You've got something that's going off in the left field. How do you bring it back into the pitcher's mound? I think first and foremost is you have to be aware of what your fundamentals are. So like I mentioned before, every business owner is going to have different fundamentals and every every position within the business is going to have different fundamentals. And it's up to that individual business owner or the manager or the department head to, to figure out what it is that they want to keep their eye on. So that's key. What are the fundamentals that you want to keep your eyes on? And then second is is checking in on them. Right. I think if we just, you know, get used to the fact that, hey, our team is always going to be greeting someone within four, four seconds, they're always going to be smiling and we just let it go and we're not auditing that, we're not checking it um, and we're we're assuming that it's there, that's how it slips through the cracks. So we have to audit, we have to check it. And even though we we love and we trust our teams, you can't expect if you don't inspect. Right. And so we got to be inspecting the work. And then as it does fall through the cracks, just going back to the fundamentals of teaching, can we go back and help the team understand why are we doing this? What are we trying to accomplish when we're doing it? And how can we do it? So that's something we live by here at Physique, the what, the why, and the how, 
right? What are we trying to do? Why are we doing it? And how can we do it? And if we do that, we help them understand it, it becomes easier to do, especially this younger generation. They're driven a lot more um, by emotion than by logic. If you read the book, The Happiness Hypothesis, it, it uses the analogy of a rider on an elephant. And the rider is logic and the elephant is emotion. And no matter how much the rider wants to go right with logic, the elephant's going to go whatever direction it wants to go. And so if we can teach, if we can lead with emotion, right, and we can say, hey, the emotion wants to go left, then the elephant's going to go left. And so oftentimes our team needs to understand the why behind why we're doing something and then helping them know not just the why, but how can I help you accomplish this? What can I do as the owner, as the leader, as the department head? to help you accomplish this now that I've, I've, I've taught it. And that becomes part of the process. So for me, it's fundamentals, build a foundation, and then it's the process, which is both your ups and downs within that. And then the third piece is the accountability. Are we holding ourselves and our teams accountable to those fundamentals? Listen, I don't know business out there that that doesn't have a fundamental that, like you said, falls through the crack here and there. I mean, you've got new employees. You got new employees coming in. And I think we can all admit there are times you got a new employee and you it could be a busy season and you just don't have time to really train them like they should be trained. It happens. And I also found that sometimes and and I'm guilty of this. You're the you're the veteran in the business and you get I, I hate to use the word lazy, but you get a little like, ah, you know, and, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And then the next thing, you know, one of the fundamentals is kind of going off the rails. Right. Right. Yeah. I think that, uh, that oftentimes comfort is our biggest enemy and that's kind of what you, you had mentioned there, like whether it's laziness or complacency or whatever it may be that once we get comfortable is when those fundamentals start to drop, when we get overconfident or cocky or however you want to put it, it's being comfortable is what what is our biggest enemy. And so I always say we got to get comfortable being uncomfortable because that's what's going to continue our success. Landon, one thing when I uh, was prepping for our episode today, you know, I, I read a little bit about you and I, I saw something I really liked that I just want to go over. And I think it kind of fits nicely with what you're talking about. I'm a little nervous now. <laughs> you, go. you said and you put a great emphasis and I have four things here that you put great emphasis on. One, holding yourself and your team accountable. Right. Two, maintaining strong focus on fundamentals. Number three, my favorite, you love to learn from failures. And number four, you're committed to growth. Right. I right. mean, to me right there, that's that's just your business um, morals, your business values, your vision, your vision of your business. I, I love that when I read that about you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I think that the biggest one that I try and teach even, even my children is it's okay to fail. I think, especially in society today, we we're afraid to fail. We're, we, we fear failure. It's failures looked down upon, but the reality of it is whether it's losing, it's failure, it's, it's disappointment, whatever it is, we learn the most from that. I think COVID is a great example of that. And I know in my business, you know, people say they hated COVID. They hated the, what it did to the fitness industry. I learned so much from it. And my business now runs at such a, a more efficient and at a better place than it ever did pre-COVID because it forced me to look at it from so many different angles. So, you know, all those are, you hit the nail on the head there, but I really love the learning from failure. Yes. Well, I feel like your visions, are, those four are very clear. And if I came to work for you, I feel like, okay, this is what the owner likes to follow. I love it. So. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Let's talk about the blind spot, right? Um, it's kind of like when you change lanes, you don't really realize that the car is is right, right there, right. even though you think you're looking, but you can't see it. What has helped you with opening five locations to prevent you from getting side blinded from the blind spot? It, it's twofold. One, it is having the best team there is, right? I have to, it, I got to give all the credit to my team. Uh, those that are with us now, those that have gone and those that will be with us uh, in the future. I, you know, you're only one person in our ownership group. We also, I have a couple other owners with us and even, even the three of us, like we have five gyms and there's three owners. We we can't be in all places at once. And so it comes down to the team. On the other side, I think it's, you know, I always say if you're the smartest person in the room, you're the dumbest person in the room. And so it's surrounding yourself with just great individuals all the time. Myself personally, I belong to a Rex Roundtable group. 
And the those core group of people that are in my particular chapter, the OMS chapter, are just they're it's they're like my brothers and sisters. They help me out in my in my business, in my personal life, in more ways than I than I ever imagined. I joined my Rex Roundtable in 2019, and I wish that I would have joined when I started my business in 2010. I have learned more in the the last few years in my Rex Roundtable than I did in all my years previously combined. And so I I can't stress enough of you know having a good team, putting your trust in them, and then looking to outside other other business professionals outside your own four walls. I absolutely agree with you on the whole Rex Round Table, how much you love them. And I had to laugh because your little bio thing, it said, I love my Rex Round Table group. Oh, my Rex. I think what's so great about Rex is the fact that whatever problem you're experiencing, there's somebody in the group that definitely experienced it as well, if not everybody. And then there's always somebody that's experienced it like way worse. So oh. they kind of they kind of make you feel better, but they're there to put their arm around you and help you and answer questions. And I think that's so vital when you're a business owner or, or a GM. Right, I agree 100%. And I, you know, what I tell my wife is, no matter how involved you are in the business, it's different talking to them than it is talking to you or one of my business partners, because to your point, they have spouses, they have business owners. So, you know, oftentimes as a business owner or, or a GM or department head, you can feel, you can feel alone or feel as if, you know, you don't know that other people know how you feel. And man, I, I can't, I, I'm not a rec spokesperson. I will tell you that, but I cannot say enough positive things about my Rex group. The, the guys and gals in that group have just, they've changed my life for the better. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope that you're walking away with a couple of gold nuggets from today's episode. Landon's contact information can be found on our show notes page at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Don't forget, you can subscribe to the show notes by clicking on the subscribe button. That's right. That is fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. In just a few moments, I will introduce you to next week's guest, Will Gadara. Warrior Instructor Academy provides relevant and original Group X instructor certifications. Warrior Rhythm is for those who crave the benefits of yoga, but prefer a fast pace, high energy, and a big beat. Warrior Strength is a brilliant blend of mobility, weights, and hit designed to help us live life better, more fully. Warrior Combat is boxing inspired. Its gritty vibe focuses on combinations, conditioning, and confidence. Give your members the gift of safe, effective, license-free programming designed for everybody and every body. Warrior formats are edgy, uplifting, and empowering. Change more lives at warriorinstructors.com. Quick Fire 5, sponsored by Hapana. It is time for the Quick Fire 5 segment. I wonder who this restaurateur and best-selling author is going to recommend for our book recommendation question. Let's take a listen. Hey, FPP family. We are here for our Quick Fire 5 questions with next week's guest, Will Gadara. Will, thanks so much for joining me on the Quick Fire 5. Thank you for having me. So we always like to get to know our guests before they come on to the show. So I have four fun questions to ask you, and then you get to pitch your episode and invite all of our FPP family to your episode next week. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, we all want to know, dying to know that top guilty pleasure. <laughs> My top guilty pleasure is probably a double double animal style from In and Out Burger. Mm, I knew it was going to be good when you laughed. Like you didn't even answer; you just had an evil laugh before. <laughs> I knew it was going to be good, and we'll say juicy. How's that? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. How about a habit or an action that you do to be productive? I journal a lot. I believe that creating a practice of reflection is an extraordinarily important approach to growing professionally and personally. A, because perspective has an expiration date and the better you can hold on to your perspectives over the course of your life, the easier it is to tap into them. And B, because so often in life, moments of inspiration will just find you and it's good to hold on to them for as long as you can. 
And I don't know about you, but I think when I write things down, whether you do a diary or a journal, it holds me a little accountable because I'll write a goal down and then who knows, life happens and you forget. And then if I, I like to go back and kind of read some things that I've, I've written and I'm like, oh, that's right. I said I was going to do that. I'm like, I've got to get that done. You know, resolutions should not be reserved for New Year's alone. <laughs> I like that. All right. Fantastic. Now let's talk about an activity that calms you. I talk often about in hospitality, you need to serve yourself if you want to be well-equipped to serve others. It's like on the plane, putting your own oxygen mask on first. We all have our oxygen. You just need to figure out how to find it. My wife, for her, it's going for a long run. For me, it's a night alone, binge watching terrible TV and eating delivery Chinese food. All right. Wait, 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 wait. What is the terrible TV? Just give me one example of terrible TV. I mean, it, it's honestly, I mean, years ago it was The Bachelor. It's not anymore. There was a season where it was The OC. Honestly, just whatever television is mindless enough such that you can put the world on pause. I like that. We'll leave it right there with that. Outstanding. Now I'm super curious to see where you're going to go with this question. <laughs> Dying to have you recommend a book to our FVP family. I mean, obviously my own unreasonable hospitality, but if I'm not being self-celebratory, I love The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek. The revelation of that book for me is that there's no winning in business or relationships. It's just about being ahead or behind and the confidence that, that has given me to to take risks or the comfort it's given me when things aren't going exactly the way that I thought they would has made me a better leader and has added stability to my life. Well, you can't go wrong with a Simon Sinek book. So thank you for that recommendation. And I'm so glad you bragged or, or recommended, should I say, your own personal book. I do appreciate that. You put a lot of hard work into it. So, you know, get it out there. Be proud. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, I'm going to sit back. I get a break from being the host. You get to turn into the host and you are going to invite all of our FBP family to your episode next week. So give them a little sneak peek into what you're going to talk about. We're going to be talking about unreasonable hospitality, um, about this idea that we all need to start being more intentional and more creative in pursuit of relationships at work with the people we work with and those that we collectively serve in life with, well, all the people that we've made the choice to care about. My entire thesis is that whatever you do for a living, you can make the choice to be in the hospitality industry simply by deciding to be as unreasonable in pursuit of how you make people feel as you very likely already are in pursuit of whatever product you're selling. We're going to talk about how unreasonable hospitality is a winning strategy because it's a win, win, win. It's better for your customers. It's better for your bottom line. And it's better for the people you work with up to and including yourself. That's right. You heard it. Will Gadara is coming onto the podcast to share his secrets of success. I mean, after all, he had the number one restaurant in the world. I'm sure he has a few hospitality secrets to share with the fitness industry. No doubt this episode will boost your business, so you won't want to miss it. Subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast player or subscribe at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. I'll meet you back here next week. That's a wrap for today's episode, but before we part, I'd like to just say a few thank yous. First of all, thanks to our founding partner, Active Management, our awesome partners, MyZone, BodyMap, Hapana, and Warrior Instructor Academy, as well as our advertisers, Rex, Roundtables, and MX Metrics. We believe what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but woven into the lives of others. <laughs>